There's no doubt at all that good lighting is an essential aspect when it comes to model building. Dim, flickering or unidirectional light can not only make it harder to model, but also adversely affect the quality of the end result. This is a topic I feel strongly about, especially when it comes to filming my videos. The company BenQ shares these views with me. That's why they kindly sent me a review unit of their Wheat e-reading desk lamp, and we'll be taking an in-depth look at the product in this full review video, simultaneously answering the question, is this an ideal task lamp for scale modelers? Let's begin the video. Hey guys, Modeling Weekly here. Before the video starts, I just want to mention that BenQ sent me the lamp free of charge, though I've not been told what to do or talk about. My opinions are honest and unbiased, despite it being a free product. I'm going to remain as neutral as possible. Let's begin by taking a look in the box. We get the base of the lamp, as well as the lamp itself, sandwiched in between two slabs of polystyrene. Alongside this, we get the instructions and the wall plug adapters. They come in a small cardboard box, though I didn't repack them to take this shot. Construction of the lamp is super easy. All you need to do is slide the bottom of the boom arm onto the base pivot. This is keyed so it's hard to get wrong. It's important that you secure these together with the small screw supplied, otherwise the base might fall off when moved. I'll take this moment to give you a rundown of the specs. It features a dual colour LED with an illuminance of 1800 lumens at 40 centimetres. The colour temperature range spans between a nice warm 2700K all the way up to 5700K which is a pretty nice daylight level. The previously mentioned LEDs are rated for a lifetime of 50,000 hours, however they are irreplaceable. When they eventually die you won't be able to get new ones as far as I'm aware. The entire lamp itself weighs a total of 4.7 kilos. It holds a pretty hefty price tag of £170, though we'll talk more about that later. For now, let's have a look at how it works. To switch the lamp on and off, all you have to do is quickly tap anywhere on the metal ring. I have to admit this is a pretty nice touch, no pun intended. You can then adjust both the colour temperature and brightness using the dial slightly forward of the ring. Clicking it down once will allow you to switch between modes. By holding the sides of the ring for a couple of seconds, you will enter screen reading mode. The lamp auto adjusts the brightness and temperature depending on the light level of your room. You can then enter normal reading mode by holding the top and bottom of the ring. So first impressions, aside from the satisfying controls, I found that the light level to be sufficient for what I do. It's much brighter than my previous lamp, which sat at a mid-ground of about 900 lumens. However, you may have a more powerful lamp than me though, in which case the change may not seem as substantial. Still though, the light intensity is very nice. In terms of practicality, I've so far deduced that the base is pretty large. If you are limited on space, then you may find it tricky fitting this thing in without obstructing too much desk real estate. BenQ does sell a desk clamp, though this will set you back an extra £22, which is pretty ridiculous in my opinion given the lamp is over £170 to begin with. It's definitely not cheap. In terms of my experience modelling under the light so far, I've encountered no big problems. Putting aside the light intensity, the curved design of the lamp does spread light further across my workspace, and helps to minimise shadows, with those that are cast being unnoticeable. This is a pretty important thing when it comes to making models, as shadows can make it hard to see into tight spaces, or paint and glue the correct sections. As well as using the lamp for model making, I've enjoyed switching it on simply to give my room some warm lighting in the evenings, as well as a brightness boost during the day. So I've pretty much gone through my initial experiences so far, as there's only so much you can say about a lamp. I'll now move on to my final summary. I'll be giving 4 ratings out of 5 to give you a better understanding of the lamp with different aspects in mind. The ratings will be build quality, practicality, value for money and lighting quality. Let's begin with build quality. It was a no brainer to give this product a 5 out of 5. The lamp uses very nice materials with very little plastic being utilised. The touch sensitive ring is electroplated with aluminium alloy and the cable is strong and braided with fabric. The joints are strong so they won't be falling out of position anytime soon. The base is very heavy so the chance of the lamp falling over is also very slim. 
I'd say that the build quality of this product is one of the main selling points as it's pretty easy to find an equally as bright lamp for a much lower price tag which uses cheaper materials. In terms of practicality I gave the lamp a 2.5 out of 5. I wanted to give it a 3 out of 5 though I just feel the large base takes up quite a lot of room and the fact that it doesn't come with an interchangeable desk clamp is disappointing given the price tag. It's true that it's sold separately though it means having to spend an extra 20 quid which is far from ideal. Then we have value for money, 2.5 out of 5 again. Don't get me wrong it's a good quality product and the features are about as advanced as a lamp can get. I just can't help feeling that the £170 price tag is just a little bit too much, especially given it will die in six years time. It's the same price as a Harder and Steenbeck Infinity or two Ultra Airbrushes, and for the same price you could buy my previous lamp about five times over. I don't know, maybe I'm disillusioned, but my recommendation is to think about it for a while before you make your purchase. Finally we come to lighting quality, five out of five possibly the most important part of the lamp, so I was glad that it was a pretty good aspect. The curved smile shape of the head spreads light across my desk nicely, and doesn't interfere with my camera's shutter speed. The brightness is also a welcome feature, especially for me as it is twice that of my old lamp, as I mentioned earlier. Essentially, the lamp part of the lamp isn't bad at all. All in all, BenQ's e-reading desk lamp is a high quality product. It feels high tech and the quality of the light it produces is more than acceptable. If you do plan to purchase it, I'd keep in mind the size of your workspace. Its dimensions are not small, 59 by 22 by 62 centimeters, and the base is quite large. I believe BenQ has a smaller version in their range called the Genie Desk Lamp. You may want to check this out before committing to the real deal. In regards to price, let's face it, it's not cheap purchasing it is a very big commitment, so be sure to research as much as possible into it so you don't do anything you regret later. As I said earlier, despite me trying to remain as unbiased as possible, I did receive it for free, so my opinion on the cost or value for money will be different to someone who actually bought it. As I said, do a little more research before committing. Well, I think I've said all that I want to do for this video. If you found it helpful, feel free to drop a like below and you may want to subscribe to stay posted on new content. If you thought it was a bad video, leave a dislike and explain why in the comments. That's it from me today and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!